Hi guys, so I'm so excited. I am at Jenna Blake's home here in Los Angeles. Jenna is an amazing jewelry designer, as you can see. Thank you, Mom. And I love your house. I mean, it's so beautiful. Thank you so much. We have to show you guys her house. I mean, it's impeccable. It's so beautiful, every single little detail. And I'm really honored that you let us come today and shoot in your beautiful house. Yeah, my house is really a reflection of my style. And much like my jewelry, it's layered with texture and color and many different periods. And um, I'm excited to see how you kind of bring that expertise of color and texture into my makeup palette. Well, we're gonna show you guys in this video. So basically what I wanted to do is tie in all the beautiful colors in your jewelry, which has a lot of coral in it, and tie it into the makeup. And we just have a conversation in general about how to apply makeup the correct way, how to sort of ma uh, match it with your jewelry. And if you wanna see this video, just keep on watching and enjoy. All right, so I started already with Jenna's foundation and a little bit of primer beforehand, so I'm not gonna show you guys how I applied it, but here's the product. I used the new Victoria Beckham primer, and I used the Kogendo Aqua Foundation. Uh, it's the shade 123, and uh, I'm gonna go right into doing your makeup right now. I'm so excited because what you're wearing is just perfect. I mean, I love your jewelry. And we, what we're gonna do, I think this is really great for summer, is doing like a coral look and sort of like matching your jewelry with the makeup. So I picked some really fun products for you. Right. And we're gonna do like a coral -y sort of vibe. All right, so for your eye makeup, I chose this Tom Ford Cream um, Shadow, which looks like that. It's one of my favorites. It's sort of like a pinky, peachy shade. I use this on so many of my clients and I love it because it has a little bit of a sheen and it's a super easy product. It's the kind of product you can actually, I'm using a brush, but you could really just use your fingers and it like really, if you open up your eye and look in the camera, it just like gives like really like nice pick me up and it's a really foolproof type of product where you can just again, use it on its own or you can layer it with an eyeshadow, which I'm gonna do today. I'm just gonna put a little bit more of depth into your socket. All right, so we just applied the cream shadow and I'm actually gonna use my bronzer, which I'm gonna use later on in her cheeks. I'm gonna use that shade as a um, sort of like contour color for your socket. So for that, you need like a sort of like fluffy brush, something like the MAC 217. And I'm just bringing that into your socket of your eye because it just gives a little bit of definition. It's almost, you have to think about your contouring your eye mm -hmm. instead of just having one color, which is gonna bring a little bit of depth into your eye makeup. All right, so for your eye pencil, I chose this Aubergine color, which is like one of my absolute favorite pencils by Glossier. It's such a great color. And I think it's a color- Oh, I love a purple. It's kind of like so underrated and people get scared of color. I don't know if you noticed that with yes, jewelry. Yes, jewelry, it's the same thing. People always want more neutral, but I think if you choose the right color, it like, can do magic in your yeah. In then your it face. enhances and accentuates rather than just stands out. Yes. Sometimes you don't even know it's there. Yeah. So I think that this is going to be love really this color. pretty. So we're going to just put that really close to your lash line. And the trick with a pencil like this, this is really the formulation is super um, easy and it glides on, so you don't have to be too precious about it. But I think what's important is that you don't make the line too thick and you really want to sort of like get as close as possible to the lash line and sort of like wiggle it in between the lashes. I just really want to share with everyone my absolute <gasps> I favorite. I love that sharpener. Sharpener. It reminds me of school, yes, doesn't it? Yes. But it's my favorite sharpener and I think every woman should own this. And you should have, because people forget, like what I notice with like the everyday woman, when I go to their bathrooms, one thing I always notice is they have dirty brushes and they don't sharpen their pencils because I think it's just something you forget. Mm -hmm. And I think those are really important things because 
first of all, I've been using this on someone else, so I want to, you know, get, you know, make it clean. clean. But also, you will get a much more precise uh, line that way. And like you just said, oh, I don't know how to do it. I think your first step is to have a nicely sharpened pencil, and that will allow you to get like closer and mm -hmm. deeper into your lashes. So I'm using this little smudger brush, and I just kind of like smudge it again into your lash line so it looks um, it looks not like a perfect line it looks more smudged in mm -hmm. so I'm going to use this mascara on Jenna it's called Abel and you were just asking me what this is and I really love this brand it's an LA makeup artist who came out with a mascara this is what it looks like and this here is I for people that. who don't know how to put mascara on so it has this little rubber thing where you can just hold it like that and then you paint so smart it's so smart and it's a really good mascara and she also makes a really beautiful um, eye pencil I could definitely use that tool because I tend to clump up. Oh, you're going to love this yeah. mascara. And it's really, the formulation is really beautiful. And it doesn't clump. It gives a really nice volume. It's lengthening. All right, so we just put on some mascara. And I love, look, this even matches our I just makeup love it. today. It's such a pretty packaging. So these are like by Sweet. And I think it's a collaboration with Nikki Makeup. And they're like no lash. All right, so I'm going to put in a few individuals. And they come in like short, medium, and long. So I'm going to do short and medium. And so I'm going to start with the medium on the outer corner. You're going to layer them, right? Well, I'm going to do like the medium sort of like on the outer corner and a little bit in the middle. And then I go in with the shorter versions. So they don't all look the same length. What about layering jewelry? Though? Yeah, it's really much like the lashes. It's kind of about finding the perfect balance where it looks natural, but it's pronounced. Obviously, jewelry, you want to stand out more than the lashes. But um, really, I play with lengths and size and dimension all the time. And, um, you know, something bold with something light, complementing different colors and shapes. Um, a lot of thought goes into it, but you don't want it to look overthought either. So the effortless thing sometimes when you look at it and it looks effortless, but there's a lot of thought in it, right? Yes. Yeah. I like to offer um, options with lengths and different kinds of extensions you can add to pieces because you know your neckline changes and the way you want to wear things changes. All right, your lashes. I cannot wait for you to I'm see so them. I'm so excited. They look great. I think that those are my new favorite lashes. I haven't actually used this particular pair, but they are beautiful. Um, so for your brows, I'm gonna do just a brow gel because you have amazing brows. And I love that they're kind of like undone. It's, they have a life of their own. They're great. Well, I just have so many other maintenance issues. <laughs> the regularity I would need for my brows. I just gave up on two years ago. when. When full brows came back, I said, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, they look beautiful. So all you need is a brow gel. All right, so for under eye concealing, you asked me earlier what to do with if you have some darkness underneath your eyes, which you don't. But if you do, I always recommend using a concealer with a little bit of a peach or a pinky undertone. Mm. The one I chose for you is by NARS. It's the shade Honey. I love this concealer. It does wonders. And this has such a beautiful undertone that it will immediately, I'm gonna show you how this looks like on one side so everyone can kind of see what I'm doing. So I'm really gonna go underneath the area where you feel like you're the darkest. I never know exactly how much to put on. Yeah. Because for me, it just, it seems like no matter how much I put on, it's still dark, but then I don't want it to look cakey. Right, so now you have a video, you can look back. But I think this amount is really good. What I like to do is I actually like to let it sit for a minute. I know this sounds weird, but I like it to sort of like work mm. a little bit magic, and then I go in and blend it. So if you have other things to do in your face, maybe spend like a minute on that. So I'm gonna do this side. There are plenty other things to do. Yeah, and I'm gonna wait for like a half a minute. 
And then I go in and what I like to use is my beauty blender and I just sort of like bounce it in. Right, I never like, know. Like see how I bounce it instead of like... Brushing. Instead of like wiping yes. it, I sort of just bounce it. If you use your finger, instead of wiping, you press it in. If you use a brush, again, you kind of like push it in rather than, yes. you know, going like that. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to go in with custard and just or like brighten the under eye area. All right, so we just applied the concealer. Now I want to talk about powder underneath your eyes. I know a lot of people are worried, especially, you know, again, if you're a certain age and you wear too much powder underneath your eyes, it can look cakey and can look like you're wearing too much and it can age you. But if you're using concealer, I think you always have to set it because if you don't set it, it will, you know, it will go into your fine lines and it will look cakey. So I like to use a loose powder and my favorite one is by Laura Mercier, which is this one. And then I just do a touch of powder, like not a lot. And I just go in with my powder puff. And this is something you should do immediately after you apply the concealer. I go in and just set it. All right, so for, for contour, I'm a huge fan of this product. Everyone who watches my videos Ooh. knows that I use this product at all times. It's a, a cream bronzer. It's very intimidating mm, when you look at it. And what I like to do with it is, again, I like to bring a little bit of dimension into your face and not necessarily contour you, but I like to sort of balance your face and again dimension and bring out your cheekbones. I use like a nice sort of like tapered brush that go in the hollows of your cheeks. You can even do it in your jawline, mm. which I think is really, really beneficial for if you're on camera. I do this a lot on my celebrity clients for the red carpet. I always like to bring it a little bit in the temple and I like to bring it in the forehead, especially when you wear your hair backwards, because it sort of like ties mm. everything together. So it doesn't just look like you're wearing a streak. And then to blend it in, my favorite brush, the Artiste brush, this bit. All right, another bronzer. This is something I love to do is layering, like with jewelry. I now go in with an actual bronzer, which has a little bit more shimmer than the cream one we used. Um, and this is more to like bring warmth into your face. So this was, the one before was more to create, you know, dimension and shape. And this is to like, <clears throat> just kind of like bring a little bit life into your face. That's why I'm using a big fluffy brush. All right, and then for cheeks, a huge fan of Glossier, kind of similar to the color of your jewelry, but it's still in the nude family, so it doesn't look too peachy. It's definitely a nude, and it's cream. And I'm a huge fan of cream blush. Okay. Because it just like makes your skin look more alive mm -hmm. and fresh, but there's no shimmer in this blush. It's just creamy. And um, again, we're creating different textures and not everything has to be matte. So with the cream blush, I'm going in to create a little bit more texture again. Now I'm gonna just go in with my Glossier highlighter. All right, so for lips, I decided on giving you two options. I'm obsessed with this lip oil by Dior. Now this has a little bit of the cool orange aspect in it, which will tie everything together. But this is super effortless. It's the type of product. It doesn't really show a lot of color, just a hint. And I think it's like the it's a great product for during the day if you don't want to have a big commitment mm -hmm. of a lip product. And I love the applicator of this. It has this like gorgeous little sponge. Oh, I love it. So I'm gonna do that now, and then I give you like another option if you want more of a commitment and more something for like you know nighttime or for it to like really tie all together. So this. Isn't this, doesn't this mm. feel so, I know, I love this so much. 
And it smells good. Yeah, it smells so good. It feels so good on the uh -huh. lips. I need to get this. Yeah, this definitely. I love it just by itself. Without a lip liner. I'm it's, a big gloss person. It's beautiful on you like that. So that's the first look. So now we're going to pick it up with a little bit more color. I have this Charlotte Tilbury. I made this. I love this. This is like every single Charlotte Tilbury mm, lipstick so handy. in the little, you know, palette. And I'm doing this shade right here, which I think will match gorgeous with uh, the jewelry and your sweater. And I love match. Like, that's actually a really interesting topic because people always are like, should I match or should I not match? And... I, it just depends really like there's no rule like you don't have to but I think it can look really really like uniformed and really like pulled together if you do yeah it has to be pleasing to the eye it has to be once I had this whole look I was going out um, and I had red lipstick on mm -hmm. and I decided to wear a ruby necklace and mm -hmm. the rubies were just a little bit more pink than red and it threw me off I just the whole night so I had to change my lipstick I, I totally hear you I remember one time I did somebody and I put on this gorgeous like berry lip and her nails were done earlier and they were like red and on the red carpet like she would sort of touch her face and it was clashing it was driving it's, me crazy so it just depends on, yeah. the, on the circumstances yeah but let's put this color on it's so pretty and I'm a huge coral fan. I think coral is probably one of my absolutely favorite colors. It's so chic. And I think it's the kind of color that really works well on so many different skin colors. I and, agree. You oh, know, this is so, so often you. people try jewelry on with me and their chest and the skin tone. Coral's universal. It's universal. Mm -hmm. Wow, this just totally brought it to another level. So I'm just defining the lip with a lip liner. When you're using a darker shade or a brighter shade, it's always good to use a lip liner just to sort of make it all cohesive. But I think we're done, Jenna. So thank you guys so much for watching. I had the best day. I love being at your home. I, I mean, it's so beautiful here. I'm so inspired by your style, by your jewelry. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this look and I hope you like your makeup. Thank you, Monica. I learned so much for me today and I'm excited in the future to kind of match my jewelry to my makeup in subtle ways. And um, your technique really taught me so much. And I'm going to take notes. Thank you guys so much. And don't forget to follow Jenna on Instagram. All the information is below in the description box. We see you soon. Bye. Bye.